Men and women have altered their hair color for thousands of years. Early cultures considered colors to be symbols of power and mysticism. This belief led to the body paint and hair coloring from vegetable and mineral dyes, as evidenced by chemicals and tools found in Egyptian tools. In the 1880s, American men had their beards and mustache dyed in a barbershop with coloring products that left their hair with strange iridescent tones of purple hues. These early formulations were made of silver, nitrate, gold, chloride, gum, and distilled water. Since the first synthetic dyes were developed in 1883, color technology and hair coloring process have steadily improved in performance and safety. Hair coloring is the art and science of changing the color of the hair. Hair lightening is the partial or total removal of natural pigment or artificial coloring from the hair. In today's barbershop, many clients accept barbers to be skilled in performing hair and coloring and lightening services. Recently, there has been an increase in demand for beard and mustache coloring. As a barber, you need to be able to perform these services with knowledge and skill. The client's hair structure and condition will affect the quality and success of the hair color service. Six characteristics of hair that are important consideration in determining hair coloring options and product selections are elasticity, texture, density, porosity, natural hair color, and contributing pigments. Elasticity is an important factor to consider because it is an indication of the strength of the cortex, including cross bonds and melanin molecules. Normal elasticity is indicated by wet hair that can stretch up to 50% of its original length and then return to the length without breaking. Low elasticity is indicated by wet hair that does not return to its original length and stretch. Texture. The diameter of the individual hair strands determine whether the hair texture is classified as fine, medium, or coarse. Melanin is distributed differently within the different textures. Fine hair has a melanin grouped tightly so that the hair takes color fast and may appear darker. Medium texture has hair average response time to hair coloring products. Coarse hair has a larger diameter with loosely grouped melanin and may take longer to process. Density refers to the number of hairs per square inch on the scalp. It ranges from thin to thick and determines the subsection size to use to assure proper coverage of the hair color or lightener. For example, you may need a part off subsection as thin as 1 8 inch on a client with very thick hair. Porosity is the hair's ability to absorb moisture. The porosity level of the hair determines its ability to absorb hair color products. Porous hair absorbs hair color products faster with more intensity and may appear darker than less porous hair. Degrees of porosities are high porosity. Hair may not only absorb the color product quickly but also intend to fade quickly due to its inability to hold color pigments. The hair will feel very rough, dry, or may break during a porosity test. Average porosity. The cuticle is slightly raised and the hair tends to process normally. You should feel a slight roughness to the hair during a porosity test. Low porosity. The cuticle is tight, making the hair more resistant to chemical penetration and may require a longer time to penetrate the hair shaft or a higher value developer to its strength. The hair will feel smooth and or hard during a porosity test. Natural hair color ranges from black to brown to red and form dark blonde to lightest blonde. These natural color ranges are produced by two types of melanin. E-melanin provides natural black and brown pigments to hair. Phenom melanin provides yellow blonde or red pigment color to hair. The three factors that determine what natural hair colors look like are thickness of hair, total numbers, and size of pigments, 
ratio of e-melanin and phenylmelanin within the cortex. Gray hair is the result of reduction in the production of melanin pigments. White hair is actually the color of keratin within melanin and therefore does not contain either type of melanin. Contributing pigments is the pigment that lies under the natural hair color. The foundation of hair coloring is based on modifying this pigment with hair coloring products to create new colors. When lightening a client's natural hair color, the darker the natural level, the more intense the contributing pigment is. Color is a characteristic of visible light energy. Although the human eye only sees six colors, the brain is capable of visualizing combination of different wavelengths relevant to the three primarily and three secondarily colors. The light rays are absorbed or reflected by natural hair pigments or artificial pigments added to the hair creating the colors we see. The laws of color is a system for understanding color relationships. The laws of color regulate the mixing of dyes and pigments to make the other colors. Based in science and adapted to art, the laws of color serve as guidelines for harmonious color mixing. For example, equal parts of red and blue mixed together always make violet. A color wheel is a diagram that presents colors in a specific and sequel order to show the relationship to one color to another. Primarily colors are basic or true colors that cannot be created by combining other colors. The three primarily colors are yellow, red, and blue and are found naturally in the world, such as yellow, dandelions, and red roses. All other colors are created by some other combination of red, yellow, or blue. Colors with predominance of blue are cool tone colors, and colors that are predominantly red are warm tone. Blue is the strongest and the only cool primarily color. Blue brings depth and darkness to any color to which it is added. Red is the medium primarily color. Adding red to a blue base color makes them appear lighter. Red added to yellow color will appear darker. Yellow is the weakest of the primarily colors and will lighten and brighten other colors. Secondary colors are created by mixing equal amounts of two primarily colors when mixed in equal parts. Yellow and blue creates green. Blue and red creates violet. Red and yellow creates orange. Territory colors are called quantitary colors, are created by mixing equal amounts of one primary color with one of its adjacent secondary colors. Territory colors are blue and green, blue and violet, red and violet, red and orange, yellow and green, yellow and orange. Complementary colors are primary and secondary colors positioned directly opposite each other on the color wheel. Complementary colors include blue and orange, red and green, yellow and violet. When mixed together, complementary colors neutralize each other. For example, when you mix equal amounts, red and green neutralize each other, creating brown or a neutral tone. Complementary colors are always composed of a primary and a secondary color and a complementary pairs always consist of all three primary colors. For example, the color wheel shows that the complement of red is green. Green is made up of blue and yellow. So all three primary colors are represented to varying degree in the complementary pair of red and green. Hue is the basic name of a color such as red, yellow, or violet, the color wheel is an arrangement of hues that makes the relationship among color visible. Tone describes the warm or coolness of a color. The warm 
colors are known as hair lightening colors. Produce warmer tones because they reflect more light. Warm colors are red, orange, and yellow. The cool colors are known as ash or drab colors. Absorb more light and cast cool tones. Cool colors are blue, green, and violet. Level is a unit of measurement used to identify the lightness or darkness of a color. Level is the saturation, density, or concentration of color. Colors lighten when mixed with white. Colors darken when mixed with black. Level system is used to analyze the lightness or darkness of the hair color. The colors of hair and of hair colors products are arranged on a scale of one to 10. One is the darkest, black. 10 is the lightest, blonde. Although the names of the color levels may vary among manufacturers, the level system provides a guide to identify the lightness and darkness of each color level. This information is necessary to determine natural hair color levels and for formulating, matching, and correcting colors. Saturation or intensity refers to the degree of concentration or the amount of pigment in that color. It is the strength of a color. For example, a saturated red is very vivid. Any color can be more or less saturated. The more saturated the product, the more dramatic the change in the hair color. Base color. Artificial hair colors are developed from primary and secondary colors to form base colors. The base color of hair coloring product is the predominant tone of a color which greatly influences the final color result. Example of base colors used in hair color products are as follows. A violet base color produces cool results and help minimize yellow tones. A blue base color minimizes orange tones. A red orange base color creates warm, bright tones in the hair. A neutral base color tends to soften and balance other colors. Hair coloring result depending on a combination of client's natural hair color, artificial hair color product that is added to it. Identifying the natural level and tone of the client's hair will determine which products to use and what the final result will look like. Identifying the natural level of the client's hair is accomplished by using a manufacturer's swatch or color ring to match the client's hair color. To determine a client's natural level, part off a half inch off section from just under the crown area, comb through and hold the section so light will filter through. Using a natural level swatch or coloring, select a swatch that matches the hair color. Move the swatch from the scalp along the entire strand. Determine the natural hair color level. Gray hair is normally associated with aging, although hereditary is also a contributing factor. In most cases, the loss of pigment increases as a person's ages, resulting in a range of gray tones from blended to solid. The amount of gray in an individual's hair is measured in percentages and requires special care when formulating hair coloring applications. Hair coloring products are characterized as non-oxidative and oxidative. The non-oxidizing hair coloring products are temporary hair color, washes out with one shampoo, semi-permanent hair color, washes out or fades within a few weeks. The oxidizing hair coloring products are demi-permanent, lasts longer than semi-permanent, but not as long as permanent hair color. Permanent stays in the hair until the hair grows out. Non-oxidizing versus oxidizing hair color products determine a product's color fastness or its ability to remain on the hair. And that is determined by the chemical composition and molecule weight of the pigments and dyes within the products. 
Temporary color creates fun, bold results that is easily shampooed from the hair. Neutralizes yellow or other unwanted tones. Permanent color introduces a client to hair coloring services. Add sub color results. Bimi permanent color blends gray hair, enhances natural color, tones pre lightened hair, refreshes faded color, can act as a filler in color correction. Permanent hair color changes existing hair color permanently, covers gray, create bright and natural looking hair color. Temporary colors use color molecules that are the largest found in hair coloring products. The large size of the color molecule prevents penetration beyond the cuticle layer, producing only a coating on the outside of the hair. This coating usually lasts only until the next shampoo. The chemical composition of a temporary color is acidic creating a physical change rather than a chemical change in the hair shaft. Temporary hair rinses have a pH range of 2.0 to 4.5. If a temporary hair color has aniline derivatives as an ingredient, a predisposition test is required. Be sure to read the manufacturer's instructions. Different types of temporary hair colors include color rinses, Highlight the existing color or add color to the hair and remain on the hair until the next shampoo. Color enhancing shampoos are a combination of a color rinse with a shampoo and produce highlights and impart slight color tones to the hair. Crayons are sticks of coloring compounded with soaps of synthetic waxes and sometimes used to color gray or white hairs between hair tint retouches. They can also be used as temporary colors for mustache, beards, or sideburns. They are available in several standard colors, blonde, light, medium, and dark brown, black, and auburn. Hair color sprays are applied to dry hair from aerosol containers. They are usually available in vibrant colors and generally used for special effects. Hair coloring mouses and gels are combinations of a little bit of color and styling mouse or gel in one product. Semi-permanent colors are no lift, deposit only hair colored products. Semi-permanent pigments molecules are of a lesser molecule weight and size than those of temporary colors. The pigment molecules are small enough to partially penetrate in the hair shaft and stain the cuticle layer. However, these molecules are small enough to leave the hair during shampooing and to fade with each shampoo. Traditional semi-permanent colors usually last from six to eight shampoos as the color molecules are shampooed from the hair. The chemical composition of semi-permanent color is mildly alkaline, causes the cortex to swell and raises the cuticle to allow some penetration. This chemical composition combines small color molecules, solvents, alkaline swelling agents, and surfants to create a type of color that is known as self-penetrating. Self-penetrating colors tend to make a mild chemical change as well as a physical change. Most semi-permanent colors do not contain ammonia and may be used right out of the bottle. Although normally gentle on the hair, semi-permanent colors require a patch test prior to application to prevent the occurrence of product sensitivity or allergic reaction. These tests require the FDA before the application of any product that contains aniline derivatives. Semi-permanent hair color typically falls within the 7.0 to 9.0 pH range. Due to slight alkaline or semi-permanent color, hair color services should be followed with a mild acid balance shampoo and conditioning. This process neutralizes and residual alkalinity and helps restore the hair to normal pH levels. Semi-permanent hair color may be used to 
cover or a blend partially gray hair without affecting its natural color when the hair color and product color are matched correctly cover gray hair on clients who has up to 25 percent gray enhances or deepens color tones in the hair serve as a non peroxide toner for pre-lightened hair demi permanent hair coloring also known as no lift deposit only hair coloring are long lasting than semi-permanent colors they are designed to deposit color without lifting natural or artificial color in the hair and are a type of oxidation color they are not used directly out of the bottle but must be mixed with a lower volume developer or activator immediately before use the agent in the developer causes oxidation to occur which develops the color. Demi permanent darkens the hair color when applied. They are available in gel, cream, or liquid forms. Because they contain aniline derivatives, a patch test is required before application. Demi permanent hair coloring may be used to get vivid color results, introduce a client to a color service, blend or cover up to 50% gray, refresh and faded permanent color, deposit color or changes within lighten the color, reverses highlights, performs corrective coloring. Permanent hair colors are mixed with developers and remain in the hair permanently. When the hair grows, a touch up or retouch application is required to blend the new growth with the previous colored hair. A permanent hair color is also known as tint. Permanent hair color products usually contain all of the following. Ammonia, oxidative tints, hydrogen peroxide. Permanent hair color products contain aniline derivatives so they require a patch test or a predisposition test. They can lighten and deposit color in one process. They can lighten natural hair color because they are more alkaline than demi-permanent oxidation colors and are usually mixed with a higher volume developer. The amount of lift is controlled by the pH and concentration of peroxide in the developer. The amount of deposit depends on the amount of color in the product. Permanent hair color products are usually mixed with an equal amount of 20 volume peroxide and are capable of lifting one or two levels. When mixed with higher volumes of peroxide, permanent colors can lift up to four levels. Since some manufacturers recommend a 2-1 ratio of developer to hair color, always read the manufacturer's directions. When a permanent hair color is mixed with the developer and applied to the hair, the cuticle layers will swell and begin to open, allowing the developer small color molecules to enter the cortex. This process usually takes place in the first 10 to 15 minutes after the color is mixed. The molecule will then oxidize the growth and size of the remaining processing time, trapping the molecule in the cortex. They are then too big to get out of the cortex. The permanent hair color products are alkaline and generally range between 9.0 and 10.5 on the pH scale. After processing, the hair color is shampooed and as it dries, it begins to return to its normal pH. This process causes the cortex to shrink and the cuticle to close, which tends to further trap the color molecules. Except the residential color permanent hair color does not wash out during the shampoo process. Eventually, the color may fade and may require refreshing. When a new process growth, a line of demarcation develops between the new growth and the previous colored hair. This stage requires an application of permanent hair coloring to the new growth, known as a retouch application. Permanent hair coloring products are regarded as the best products for covering gray hair. They diffuse natural pigments through the actions of lifting and add artificial color to the hair as the color molecules are trapped in the cortex. The gray and non-gray areas blend uniformly with full coverage. 
Oxidation tents are also known as an aniline derivative tents, penetrating tents, synthetic organic tents, and animal tents. They can lighten and deposit color in a single process and are available in a wide variety of colors. Toners also fall into category of permanent color and are aniline derivative products of pale, delicate shades designed for use on pre-lightened hair. Most oxidation tents contain aniline derivatives and require a predisposition test before the service is performed. As long as the hair is of normal strength and in good condition, oxidation tents are capable with other professional chemical services, such as a chemical wave and relaxers. Oxidation tents are sold in bottles and tubes in either a semi-liquid or cream form. Tents must be mixed with hydrogen peroxide, which activates chemical reaction known as oxidation. This reaction begins as soon as the two products are combined. So the mixed tent must be used immediately. Any leftover tent must be discarded since it deteriorates quickly. Timing the application of the tent depends upon the product and the volume of peroxide selected. Consult the manufacturer's direction and your instructor for assistance. A strand test should always be performed to ensure satisfaction results. Vegetable tints, also known as natural hair colors, are hair coloring products made from various plants, such as herbs and flowers. In the past, Egyptian henna and other plants were used to color the hair. Even though vegetable tints are considered permanent, they are non-oxidation color products because they are not mixed with the developer. Henna is still used as a professional hair coloring product, but should be used with caution. It has a coating action that can build up with overuse and prevent the penetration of other chemicals. It may penetrate the cortex and attach to the salt bonds, leaving the hair unfit for other professional treatments. Metallic dyes are not professional hair coloring products. Metallic dyes are advertised as color restorers or progressive colors. The metallic ingredients such as lead, as creep, or silver nitrate reacts to the keratin in the hair turning it down. This reaction creates a color film coating that produces a dull metallic appearance. If a product has silver nitrate in it, it oxidizes over time with oxygen in the air and tarnishes, turning the hair to blackish gray. Repeated treatments of metallic dyes can damage the hair and can react adversely with many professional chemical services, such as relaxers and chemical waves. Like metallic dyes, compound dyes are not used professionally. Compound dyes are metallic or mineral dyes combined with vegetable tint. Metallic salts are added to vegetable tints, such as henna, to give the product much more staying power to create a different color look. Like metallic dyes, these products can change color, coat the hair, and make the hair unfit for other chemical services. A hydrogen peroxide developer is an oxidizing agent that supplies oxygen gas for the development of color molecules when mixed with an oxidative hair coloring product. When diluted with water and other substances for use in hair coloring, hydrogen peroxide has a mildly acid pH of 3.5 to 4.0. Hydrogen peroxide alone produces a relatively mild lightly of natural hair color and causes little damages to the hair shaft. A color change occurs in the hair when the oxygen combines with the melanin in the hair. As the oxygen and melanin combine, the peroxide solution begins to diffuse and lighten the melanin within the cortex. The smaller structure and spread out distribution of the diffused melanin gives the hair a lighter appearance. The diffused melanin is called oxymelanin. When very pale light shades are desired, however, chemical lighteners must be used. Hydrogen peroxide serves as a main oxidizing agent used in hair coloring. 
the chemical action of the oxygen with the artificial hair coloring molecules in the hair color product is called oxidation. The small artificial color molecules expand into larger form because of the chemical action. In hair coloring, the term volume is used to denote the different strength of hydrogen peroxide. Volume measures the concentration and strength of hydrogen peroxide. The lower the volume, the lesser the lift or lightning achieved. The higher the volume, the greater the lifting or lightning action. Hydrogen peroxide is distributed for use under a variety of names that include developer, oxidizer, generator, catalyst. Regardless of the name used, hydrogen peroxide is used in three forms. Cream peroxide contains additives such as thickeners, dabbers, conditioners, and acids for stabilization. The thickeners help create a product that tends to stay moist on the hair longer than liquid peroxide. It's easy to control and does not drip during the brush and bowl method of application. Liquid hydrogen peroxide contains a stabilizing acid that brings the pH to between 3.5 and 4.0. They are convenient because they are used with the most of today's bleach intense formulas. Dry peroxide are available in either tablet or powder form and are dissolved in liquid hydrogen peroxide to boost the value. The availability of liquid and cream peroxide in a variety of volumes has made this product somewhat obsolete. The safety precautions for using hydrogen peroxide including the following. Use clean implements when measuring using and storing hydrogen peroxide. Even a small amount of dirt or impurities can cause hydrogen peroxide to deteriorate. Never measure the needed amount of hydrogen peroxide by pouring it into the lid of any product. The residue will cause the product in the container to oxidize as it sits on the shelf and renders its unusability. Do not allow hydrogen peroxide formulations to come in contact with metal. Metal causes the oxidation process to occur too quickly to allow proper color development. Avoid breathing in vapors causing by mixing in hydrogen peroxide in hair color products. A hydrogen peroxide volume of 20 or more can cause skin irritation, chemical burns, and hair damage. Keep the cap closed securely on the hydrogen peroxide at all times when not in use. Overexposure to the air will affect the strength. Lighteners are chemical compounds that lighten hair by dispersing, dissolving, and decolorizing the natural hair pigment, which is accomplished by mixing the bleach and hydrogen peroxide, which mix the pH of lighteners is around 10.0. As soon as hydrogen peroxide is mixed into the lightener formula, it begins to release oxygen. The hair pigment goes through different stages of color as it lightens. The amount of change depends on how much natural pigment or melanin the hair has. The strength of the lightener. The length of time the lightener is on the hair. During the decolorization process, natural hair may go through many stages of lightening from the darkest to the lightest. Natural black hair can lighten through the brown and or red stages to orange, gold, yellow, and finally to pale yellow. Hair lighteners are used to create blonde shades that are not possible with permanent hair color. Pre-lighten the hair to prepare it for the application of a toner or tint. Lighten the hair to a particular shade or stage brighten and lighten an existing shade, lighten only certain areas of the hair, lighten naturally dark hair, lighten hair without depositing color. Lighteners are available in three forms, cream, powder, and oil. Cream and oil lighteners are considered under scalp lighteners, and powder lighteners are off the scalp lighteners. That said, some newer powder lighteners may be used on the scalp, so always refer to the manufacturer's directions before purchase or application.
Each type of lightener has a unique ability, chemical composition, and formulation procedure. Cream lighteners are the most popular type on the scalp lightener. They contain conditioning agents, bluing agents, and thickness, which makes them easy to apply and will not run, drip, or dry out. Cream lighteners provide the following benefits. The conditioning agents give some protection to the hair. The bluing agents help drab undesirable red and gold turns. The thickener provides control during application and prevents overlap. Powder lighteners are also called paste speed or quick lighteners contain oxygen releasing boosters and substances for quick and strong lightning. These lighteners will stay in place and not run or drip, but do not contain conditioning agents and tend to dry out quickly. Because they are strong than oil or cream lighteners, they may also be too strong to use directly on the scalp. Be sure to read the directions to see if it's safe to use powder lightener for a virgin lightener or a lightener retouch. Oil lighteners are not as popular as cream or powder lighteners nowadays. They are usually mixtures of hydrogen peroxide with softening oils as an oil as on the scalp lightener. They are the mildest form of lighteners and may be used when only one or two levels or lift are desired. There are two types of oil lighteners. Color oil lighteners are add temporary color at the lightning. Gold lightens and adds golden to reddish tones depending on the base color of the hair. Silver lightens and adds silvery highlights to gray or white hair and minimizes red and gold tones and other shades. Red lightens and adds red highlights. Drab lightens and adds highlights and tones down to reduce red and gold tones. Neutral oil lighteners remove pigments without adding color tones and may be used to pre-soften hair for a tint application. It is essential to lighten the hair to the correct stage of the lightness needed. Because the pigment that remains in the hair will impact the final result of the hair lightening and color process, for example, let's say you need to lighten a pale yellow stage but only lighten a yellow or gold stage, the tint or toner you have selected has a blue base. If you are applying blue base tint to the yellow gold hair, the hair will turn green because you only lighten to the yellow gold stage. And the blue added to yellow makes green. A toner is a permanent hair coloring product that is applied to pre-lighten hair for the purpose of achieving the desired color or tones in the hair or to neutralize unwanted undertones. For example, Brassy red tones that remain in the hair after lightening can be neutralized with a green base toner if they are the same level of lightness. Toners only add or deposit pigments into the hair shaft. They do not lighten the hair. Because toners are applied only to pre-lighten hair, they typically come to the pale, delicate, blonde shade. Adeline derivative is an ingredient in toners, so a patch test is required 24 to 48 hours before application. Toners usually have a very different color in the bottle than the final shade they produce. They may appear to be purple, blue, orange, or pink in the bottle. As toners color oxidizes, it goes through several visual color changes. Therefore, a primarily strand test should be done to determine the processing time required for desired shade. Toners are used in double process applications. Number one, the lightening application is the first process. Number two, the toner application is the second process. After the hair goes through desired stage of lightening, the color left on the hair is known as the contributing color which is usually darkest degree of contributing pigments that remains after the lightening process. Achieving the correct lightening stage is necessary for proper toning development and to achieve even color. Toner manufacturer provide recommendations provided to contributing color needed to achieve various color results. As a general rule, the lightener, the desired color, the lightener, the foundation must be, it is important to follow the guide Closely. 
over lightening hair will absorb or grab the base color of the toner while under lightening hair will appear to have more red, yellow, or orange than the intended color. While color manufacturers produce toners to complete their color lines, toning is also a process that can be performed using a semi-permanent, demi-permanent, or permanent hair coloring as a toner to achieve the desired result. Read the manufacturer's directions carefully for our operating color selection mixing the application instructions. Toner formulation and color ranges vary with each manufacturer. Using products from the same product line is recommended. The removal of artificial hair coloring products such as tint is sometimes desired. If the client wants to change to a lighter shade, a coloring mistake has been made, the hair has processed too dark due to an overporous condition. Dye removers are also known as color or tint removers. There are two basic types of products available to remove artificial pigments, such as tints and toners from the hair. Oil-based dye removers lift trap color pigment stains or buildups from cuticle layers. Do not create structure changes in the hair shaft or pigment of the hair and will not make drastic changes in the level of color. Tint or dye solute produces strong lightning effects on melanin and diffuses artificial pigments within the cortex, are non-allergic and do not require a position test because they do not contain aniline derivatives as they are strong and fast acting follow the manufacturer's directions carefully fillers are designed to correct excessive porosity and to create a color base in the hair by penetrating the cuticle and filling it empty small holes or pockets in the cortex they help even out porosity in the hair shaft that can cause uneven color depositing or lightening. There are two types of fillers. Conditioner filler are available in protein and non-protein and in gel, cream, and liquid form. Color fillers are a dual purpose hair coloring products that are able to create a color base and equalize excessive porosity in one application. They are available in clear, neutral and variety of colors. A clear filler is designed to correct porosity without affecting color and does not deposit a color base. Neutral fillers, a balance of three primarily colors, have minimal saturation and color correction abilities, but have power to equalize porosity. Hair with uneven color distribution or pre-lightened hair may benefit from a color filler application before applying a toner or a tint. Color fillers can be used to deposit color to fade hair shaft and ends, help hair hold color, help ensure a uniform color from the scalp to the hair ends, prevent color streaking, prevent off color results, prevent dullness, facilitate more uniform color and tinting the hair back to its normal shade. Color fillers are certified colors as pigments and are safe to use without a predisposition test if they contain no aniline derivatives. May be used directly from the container applied to the hair before tinting and should match the same basic shade as the toner or tint to be used. Generally, soap and water will remove moist tint stains from the skin. Stain removers are commercially prepared solutions that are designed for this purpose. When soap and water is not capable of moving hair color from the skin, use one of the following methods. Dampen a piece of cotton with the leftover tint. Use a rotary movement to cover the stained areas and follow with a damp towel. Apply a small amount of face cream and wipe clean. Use a prepared stain remover. Successful hair coloring usually requires a series of steps to accomplish the desired end result. Due to the wide range of hair coloring products, application methods, and procedures, it is important to have a clear understanding of the term used in the hair coloring process. Given the many choices in hair coloring formulations and applications, it is important that you provide the client with the appropriate product 
and follow the correct application method. Using the following as a guide for hair coloring product selection is application. Temporary color wrenches may be used to give clients a preview of how a color change will look. They are also an option for clients who want to highlight the color of their hair or add slight color to gray hair. These wrenches wash out when shampoo are available in a variety of color shades. Temporary wrenches are easily and quickly applied at the shampoo bowl and can serve as an introduction to other longer lasting color services. Temporary color wrenches can be used to bring out highlights, temporarily restore faded hair color to its natural shade, neutralize yellow tones and white or gray hair, tone down over lightened hair, perform a pre merely strand test to determine a proper color selection. Semi-permanent hair color. Products are appropriate for the client who wants more color changes than is available for the temporary rinse. But once it is hesitant about a permanent color change and it is related maintenance, a semi-permanent color fills the gap between the temporary color rinses and permanent hair color without replacing either of them. Since semi-permanent products are deposit only colors, the final outcome will depend on the hair's original color and texture, color that is applied, length of the development time. These color products are available in liquid and cream form in a variety of colors. Some formulations are specifically designed in blue, gray, or silver gray hues to brighten or blend gray color tones. The basic characteristic of semi-permanent hair color that influences the decision to choose this color product over another are semi-permanent tints do not require the use of hydrogen peroxide. The color is itself penetrating to the extent that it stains the cuticle and deposits color molecules into the cortex. The color is applied the same way for each application. Hair will usually return to its natural color after six to eight shampoos, provided a mild, non-stripping shampoo is used. Retouching is elemented. Semi-permanent colors contain aniline derivatives, so a patch test is required. Some semi-permanent hair colors require pre-shampooing, others do not. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions. The addition of artificial color to the natural pigment in the hair shafts creates a darker color. When using a color chart to determine a level or shade of semi-permanent color to use, consider the natural color to represent half of the formula. Use of the following to select the correct color to perform the strand test. The use of ash or cool shades will create a color that appears darker than if a warm shade is applied. Warm colors appear shinier due to the reflection of light. For clients with up to 25% gray, select a shade that matches the client's natural hair color. Some semi-permanent hair color products have a tendency to build up the hair shaft with the repeated application. If this happens, apply the semi-permanent hair color to the new growth only. Process until the desired color shape develops. Wet the hair with warm water. Blend the color through the hair for a few minutes. Rinse or shampoo the color from the hair following the manufacturer's instructions. Since demi-permanent color is considered to be deposit only one color, the same procedure used for the application of a semi-permanent hair color products can be used. The difference between semi-permanent and demi-permanent color is that you mix demi-permanent color with a low volume developer or an activator immediately before applying it to the client's hair. Follow the manufacturer guidelines for application color selection and processing time. Professional permanent hair coloring products contain aniline derivative color molecules and are mixed with a developer. These penetrating tints are available in liquid cream and gel forms and are used as either single process or double process tints. Single process tints provide a simple method of hair coloring. In one application, the hair can be permanently colored without pre-shampooing, pre-softening, or pre-lightening. 
a single application tint is applied on dry hair. If the hair is extremely oily or dirty and a shampoo is necessary, it must be dry before applying the tint. Single process tints contain aniline derivative molecules and an alkaline agent and are formulated for the use of 20 volume hydrogen peroxide. When other volumes of peroxides are used, the color result change. The choice of color available vary from deepest black to lightest blonde. Some characteristic of single process tints are that they save time by eliminating pre-lightening, color the hair lightener or darker than the client's natural color, blend in gray or white hair to match the client's natural hair color, tone down streaks, off shades, discoloration, and faded hair ends. The porosity of the hair is one of the most important characteristics to consider when choosing hair color tint shades. Using the following guide for choosing the level of color when tinting darker. Normal porosity, half level lightener than desired color. Slightly porous, one level lightener than desired color. Very porous, one to two level lightener than desired color. General rules for single process color selection for gray hair. To match the natural color of hair to cover gray, select the color closest to the natural shade. To brighten or lighten hair color and to cover gray, select a shade lighter than the natural color. The select tint must contain enough color to produce the desired shade on the gray hair. To darken the hair color and gray hair, Select a color darker than the natural hair color. Study the manufacturer's color chart for correct color selections. If a vibrant color is desired, add a neutral shade to it in order to ensure better coverage. Double process hair coloring begins with a hair lightening followed by either a tint or a toner. Lightening creates a new color foundation that is lighter than a client's natural hair color. This new color foundation may be the finished result or it may be the first step of a double process application. To achieve the desired shade of lightness, consideration must be given to the existing hair color, processing time and development, resulting porosity, color selection. Depending on the manufacturer's direction, hair lighteners can be used to lighten the entire head of the hair lighten the hair to a particular shade or stage, brighten and enlighten existing shade, paint, streak, or frost certain sections of the hair, remove undesirable cast and off shades, correct dark streaks and spots in the hair that is already lightened. Together with the manufacturer's direction, be guided by the following general rules when choosing a lightening product. Cream lighteners can be used on the scalp when performing version or retouching lightening services. They offer some protection to the hair and are controllable during application and can be used to drab undesirable red and gold tones. For increased strength, up to three activators can be added for the underscalp application and up to four activators for the orthoscalp process. Powder lighteners are strong enough to lighten the hair through several stages of lightening and may be used too strong to use directly on the scalp. Read and follow the manufacturer's directions carefully. Oil lighteners are the mildest form of the lighteners and may be used when only one or two levels of lift are desired. Lightener retouch is the term used when a lightener is applied only to the new growth to match the rest of the lightening hair. The client's record card should be used as a guide to determine the lightener that was previously used, processing time required for the desired stage of lightness to develop cream lightener is often used for a lightener retouch because it helps prevent overlapping on the previous lightened hair. Powder lighteners may be used if the manufacturer's directions state that it is safe to use on the scalp. When retouching the lightener is applied to the new growth only, 
If a lightener or a different level is desired overall, wait until the new growth is almost light enough or has developed fully. Then distribute the remainder of the lightener through the hair shaft. One to five minutes should be amp time to create a lightener level effect. Toners have the same chemical ingredients as a permanent hair color tint, except they contain less amount of color which give toners pale, delicate shades of color for depositing lightening hair. Pastel colors such as silver, platinum, blonde, and beige blonde are popular toners for lightening blonde colors. Gray hair and skin tones changes that accompany advances years may benefit from light silver tones. When extremely pale toner shades such as very light platinum or beige are desired, the hair must be pre-lightened to pale yellow or almost white. A toner retouch must be given the same careful consideration as you would give a double process tint retouch application. The new growth must be pre-lightened to the same degree of lightness achieved in the previous application. The lightener is applied to the new growth only to avoid damage to the hair be careful not to overlap the lightener on previous lightened hair. After the lightening process has been completed, follow the manufacturer's instructions for toner application. Some toners are applied to the entire length of the hair at one time. Some toners are first applied to the new growth area to process and then applied briefly to the length of the remaining hair. Toners are completely dependent on the proper preliminary lighting treatment which must leave the hair light and porous enough to receive the pale toner shades. Semi-permanent and demi-permanent color can be used at the lightness to achieve specific tones and colors. Strand tests are vital in double process applications. A complete explanation of a possible outcome should be discussed with the client. It is also possible that the hair cannot be decolorized sufficiently for the color choice without resulting in a serious damage in the hair. Gold or red pigments remaining in the hair after lightening indicate underlightening. Ash tones indicate overlightening, which this happens, the shades of toners should be chosen to neutralize unwanted tones. Special effect hair coloring refers to any technique that involves the partial lightening or coloring of the hair. One way of creating special effect is to strategically place light and dark colors in the hair. Highlighting is the process of lightening or coloring some of the hair strands lighter than the natural color. Low lighting or, or reverse highlighting is the process coloring strands of sections of the hair darker than the natural color. Both these techniques can be used to create special effects Hair coloring and may consist of an overall dramatic dimensional change or something more soap style. Consult your client about whether they would like to see the change in the color. The three most frequently used techniques for creating highlights or low lights are cap frost, foil frost, free form, or painting. Each hair coloring or lightening service has the potential to create a unique problem. Some problems can be avoided by performing primarily strand tests, but others can be result of unique properties within the client's hair structure that are unforeseen. Most hair coloring and lightening problems can be resolved with a calm approach, an accurate assessment of the problem, acknowledgement to correct the situation. Gray, white, or salt and pepper hair shades have a characteristic that can present unique color changes. Since both gray and white hair contains little melanin within the cortex, a large number of coloring services are performed with an intent to cover or enhance the color. Depending on the amount of gray, the hair may have a yellowish cast or process differently from the strand to another. Some gray hair also tend to be resistant to chemical processes and may require pre-softening before services. Gray, white, and salt and pepper hair with a yellowish cast can be treated with a violent base color 
that range from highlighting shampoos and temporary rinses to lighteners. The long levity of the product used will depend on the client's desired result and options offered by the barber. If lighting and color services are not typical offered in the barbershop, it is a highly recommended that a minimum highlighting shampoo or temporary rinse with the violet bases be available to clients. Since most people retain some dark hair as the turn gray, the hair must be analyzed for level, hue, and percentage of gray before appropriate product selection can be made. Gray hair may be eventually distributed and isolated in various sections of the hair, such as temple areas. Gray hair will usually accept the level of color applied. Because there is no melanin in the hair, gray hair may appear lightener after hair color is applied. When a client has 80 to 100% gray, lightener hair colors are usually more flattering than darker shades. The client's skin tone, eye color, and personal preferences will determine whether warm or cool tones are used. Many color products lines have a specific gray coverage series that provide greater saturation of the color. Occasionally, gray hair is a resistant that pre-softens as necessary for better color penetration. It is also a good idea to mix a small amount of the hair color product to perform a strand test. A strand test indicates if the hair is resistant to the product, how long it takes for the product to be absorbed by the hair, what the color results will be. Hair that is damaged due to careless chemical application, excessive heat, or misused styling products must be reconditioned before it can be tinted or lightened successfully. Sometimes hair is naturally brittle, thin, and lifeless. Both neglect and the client's physical condition may contribute to these conditions. Hair is considered damaged when it exhibits one or more of the following characteristics. Overporous brittle and dryness breaks easily little to no elasticity rough and harnish spongy and mats easily when wet resistant color or absorb too much color during a tinting process any of these conditions may create undesirable results during a tinting or lightening service Therefore, damaged hair should receive reconditioning treatments before and after hair coloring applications. To restore damaged hair to a healthy condition, hair conditioners containing lanolin or protein substances should be used. The conditioning products is applied to the hair according to the manufacturer's directions. If heat is applied, use a heating cap, a steamer, or a heating lamp be guided by your instructor as to frequency and length of time for each treatment. Clients who have been tinting or lightening their hair may want to return to their natural shade, which is known as a tint back. Each tint back must be handled as an individual situation. The determining factor in the selection of the tint shade are the present condition of the hair, present color of the hair, Final result desired, original color. To determine the client's natural hair color, check the natural shade of the hair next to the scalp. Next, select of the appropriate shade to filler correspond with the tint to be used. Otherwise, it will be difficult to obtain a uniform color from the scalp hair ends due to an uneven porosity level. Perform strength tests as needed to determine the expanded final outcome.